just go through the housekeeping points so that you're sure about this session. Um, all your cameras are off the whole session, so we can't see you at all. And your microphones are off as well, so you can't be heard and none of your background noise can be heard either. Um, the session will be recorded and it will be made available on our YouTube channel, uh, made available online in case you have to, to leave halfway through for some reason. Um, and I think the other thing to mention is it's brilliant if you keep using the chat to let us know where you are and, and to do any chatting. But if you've got any specific questions, if you can pop them in the Q&A, so then we won't, we won't lose them. And we will have a little bit of time towards the end um, to answer your questions, hopefully. Um, I think that's about it, isn't it, Ellie? OK, right. Well, I'd, um, without further ado, I'd like you... I'd like to hand you over to Caroline, who's going to tell us about using iNaturalist. Thanks very much, Caroline. Thanks, Hilary. Um, I'm just going to share my screen to start with, so if someone could let me know when it works. Can you see? Yep, awesome, fab. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Caroline. Um, and before I move into how to use iNaturalist, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about City Nature Challenge for those of you who are unfamiliar with what City Nature Challenge involves. Um, and then I'll go on to talk about how you can join in with us this year. So uh, to start, I'm going to play this video, which comes from the City Nature Challenge organisers in Los Angeles. So the actual City Nature Challenge started in 2016 um, as a kind of national American challenge, but has grown to be an international wildlife recording challenge that takes place across all over the world. So play this um, and then I'll explain in a bit more detail. Welcome to the 2021 City Nature Challenge. Now more than ever, we need to study nature in cities around the globe. We can't fully protect nature on this planet without studying what is living in cities. Help us by joining the over 350 cities worldwide as some compete and some collaborate to see how many wildlife observations we can gather together. Using cameras and smartphones, tens of thousands of people will take pictures or record sounds of wildlife in their home cities, all contributing to an international database of urban wildlife that will be used by scientists and naturalists to help understand nature in our cities and work to make them better places for humans and wildlife to live. Just imagine how many observations we can make, all working together. Go to citynaturechallenge.org to see if you're in one of the cities taking part between April 30th and May 3rd. Then take pictures of wildlife and upload them to our global database using iNaturalist or your city's preferred platform. Watch as experts all over the world help to identify your observations. Join the 2021 City Nature Challenge or follow along and see how we work together to change the world. I love the photos on that. Some of them are incredible, especially the spider one. As a spider fan. Um, Anyway, yeah, so I hope that you gathered from that that the City Nature Challenge is international um, and it's taking place across 400, city this, 400 cities this year from April 30th, which is Friday, until Monday, May the 3rd, so a long weekend. Um, in the northwest of England, however, we've been taking place for three years and it's grown every year and last year was our biggest ever event where we had over 16,000 observations. So we're hoping that this year we'll have even more. Um, it's usually a competition, um, not just across the world, but especially in the Northwest, um, Team Liverpool all the way. Um, but the emphasis this year is on collaboration and just enjoying nature and really getting the health benefits that you get from spending time in any green space. 
So whether you're a competitive or a collaborative person, I would definitely think everybody should be taking part for Liverpool. Um, and it's really easy to get involved. As I said, you just go and walk around a local green space to you. Could even be as simple as recording what's in your garden. Um, you take photographs or you can upload audio recordings of the um, wildlife that you spot onto iNaturalist. And then after May the 3rd, those records are confirmed so that they can be added to the database. And then that information is used by various um, scientists, policymakers across the world to help shape future green spaces and know more about the wildlife that's sharing our urban um, environments. So it's really simple to get involved. It's all just using the iNaturalist app, which I'm going to talk through a little bit about how to use it in case you're unaware of what to do with it. So iNaturalist is a website, but it's also a phone application. The website is a little more tricky to use um, and the phone application offers a more detailed record in terms of it takes a precise uh, location tag of where you're observing wildlife and it also records the exact time and date that you're taking your record. So I definitely personally recommend that you use the phone application. And to do this, you just download it from whatever app store is on your phone. So if you obviously have an Apple device, it'll be the Apple store. But if you have an Android, it'll be something like the Google store or Samsung Galaxy store. And once you download it, it looks like this. It has a white background with a little green bird on it. You come up with this um, beautiful flowery page and you can sign up with Facebook or a Google account or just with your email. And it's as simple as that to create an account. And once you've done all that, you'll come onto a home screen that looks a little like this, completely blank, um, with space for you to start recording your first observations. OK, now, once you've created an account, it's really simple about how you upload your record. So like I said, you'll start with this home screen that's blank. But at the bottom, it has this green plus sign, which you click to make an observation. So, and then this pops up. So there's some different ways to take a record. You don't actually have to upload a photo or an audio recording, um, and it's called a casual observation. If you wanted to just mention that you'd seen a blackbird in your neighborhood, you could do. But the best way to really upload records for City Nature Challenge is to have some evidence. So you can either take a photo live in the field or a recording and you click whichever is appropriate or you can choose an image that you might have taken earlier in the day, especially with birds or um, you know insects. Sometimes it's hard to catch them in the moment because they move so quickly um, and then you just upload it. So this is an example of when I uploaded a photo of a daisy in the field live and I click take photo. Here are some tips for the best way to take a photograph. So again, if this is obvious to you, I apologize, but sometimes these tips are just worth going over again. So it's a good idea to have a clear focused image of your species. I would recommend having um, maybe more than one species if it's different, more than one photo, if it's difficult to observe. So obviously this is a daisy, but I've got a clear photo of the flower itself. And then I've taken another photograph of kind of the leaves around it which is especially useful if you're not really sure what species you're identifying, like I said. And when you've taken that picture, you just press the little um, tick button here, and that is the start of uploading your record. So when you've done that, this is what comes up on screen, and um, this is what the record looks like. So here you have your um, photo or audio recording that you can click on at the top. You'll have the date, the time that you took it, the location where it was. So I took this a while ago as an example, but it was in Liverpool in uh, in the Chinese section and also there's a section here if it's something that's planted so if you're taking a record in your garden you tick this um, to say that it was captive or cultivated and that you put it there was a prone in the wild so you could stop there and that could be your record that would be absolutely fine for sitting out to challenge but the great thing about iNaturalist is that it has this AI technology that can help you identify species that you might not be sure of. And that's my personal favourite part about using the iNaturalist app, is learning about different plant species that I hadn't learned about before. So if you do want to go into more detail on your record, you can, and this is what you do. So for identifying the species, you click this bit here and it'll come up with different suggestions. So like I said, I've chosen a really easy example, but obviously it's a common daisy and it can identify that. So you just tick that here if that was the correct um, species that you'd observed. 
However, obviously, if you had a more complex thing, perhaps like a type of weed that didn't have a visible flower, there might be more suggestions where you can look at the examples of the species to help you determine what it is. However, if that's not quite overwhelming, you can just put something as simple as plant at the top or butterfly, bird, whatever you fancy, if you're not really clear on what type of species it is. Um, and then final tips and tricks for iNaturalist is this one. So obviously in the age where you can put anything on the internet, if you are concerned about sharing your location with others, this is quite a useful um, bit of information to have. So when you upload your record, it does show quite a precise location of where you've seen that um, specimen. Obviously, this is fine if you're just out in public. It doesn't really matter who sees where you were in my eyes. But if it was in your back garden and you didn't really want people to know precisely the location of your, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a really good example, shrub whatever. You could pick um, obscured instead of open as an option. So when you click on the location visibility, three options come up. So open is more precise, obscured is a bit more general. So if you did want to mask a bit of your location, that would be a good option to pick. You could pick private, however, that means that your record won't show any location and it won't be considered as part of City Nature Challenge. But for those of you who are quite conscious about sharing your data, that's quite a useful thing to know. Um, so yeah, so when you've finished your record, you just tick the little green arrow, little green tick at the bottom and you have done, you have submitted your record and the next stage is that other iNaturalist users will be able to confirm your species. So as you can see from this example, two other people have agreed I've seen a common daisy. But if you didn't know what species you'd found, this would be where iNaturalist users would help you identify what species it was. So it's a really good app in that sense, in that it provides an extra level of um, interaction with other members in the community to help you learn a bit more about the species in your local spaces. So I'm aware that's quite a quick tour for iNaturalist. It really is quite an easy app to use and it gets easier the more you practice. But if you do have any questions um, or you would like me to reiterate any part of that, please put a question in the Q&A box like Hilary said, and I'll happily um, explain it or answer any questions at the end of the webinar. So my final top tips for taking part in the City Nature Challenge are these. Only observations taken between the 30th of April and 3rd of May will count. So if you wanted to upload something you've observed before this day, it won't count in the City Nature Challenge. Clear and focused images are always best. We love to see what you have put up. It's lovely to look across all of the world and see what species people have seen. So make sure those images are clear. Get close to your specimen, especially if it's something large like a tree. Take a photo of a leaf. Don't just take a picture of the whole crown of the tree because that's too overwhelming and it becomes quite difficult for lots of people to identify the species. Photograph at more than one angle and five, where possible, have a go at identifying the species. I personally think that's where one of the great joys of taking part is, is learning as much about nature and different species as possible. Thank you. As I said, leave questions if you have any, um, but I'll just pass it back over to Ali and Hilary. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, if you've not ever used iNaturalist, it is so much fun. It's like Pokemon Go, but for real, <laughs> for real things. So definitely, definitely download it and, and have a go. Um, and actually with that, um, if you have iNaturalist on your phone now, um, or even if you don't, to be fair, we've got a little sort of two minute uh, challenge for you now just to get you City Nature Challenge ready um, and so in the next two minutes we want to know if you can find any wildlife living in your home so I'm gonna start this up now so that's gonna count down so have a look around Hilary where would you look well um I would, if I was going out, I'd dash out the back door and I'd lift up uh, my plant, my daffodil, uh, big pots of daffodil bulbs that are out there because I bet there's wood lice, um, there might be some millipedes, I reckon there's probably some ants today, it's been quite warm isn't there, so yeah I think that would be a good place to start anyway. 
Um, but you've got to be quick because, of course, as soon as you lift the pot up, they start scurrying, don't they? So, uh, yeah, you've got to have your hand on the pot, your hand on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, you've got to, got to be ready. Yeah, um, you do have to be ready. You do have to be ready. Another good what? place I, I would go first for me is I would go to my window and I'd look around the inside of my windowsill because there's usually a ladybird and I don't know what they're doing there, but... Yeah. There is usually a <laughs> they, um They overwinter actually in the sort of the casements of my UPVC double glazing. Perhaps they do the same with you. Um, <laughs> they gather in quite large numbers in my in my windows. So <laughs> there might be some left over from the winter. Charlotte, do you have any suggestions? Where would you dash to first? I'd look in all the dark corners, um, usually for spiders, although. <laughs> This week, I think I could just look at my laptop because I've had a little jumping spider just running along the laptop in the afternoon, which has been very nice. Oh, <laughs> Quite do. distracting, but nice. <laughs> yeah, super nice. Caroline, don't know if you've got any suggestions. I live in an um, apartment building, so we've got tons of birds around here. So I would spend a good two minutes just trying to picture one of them. <laughs> Well, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of inspiration of um, places to look initially. I don't know if anyone has found anything or perhaps just walking around to your home today, you might have just seen some wildlife about. It's, it's amazing when we say nature on your doorstep, we, we should also be saying nature within your household as well. It does always work its way in. And Natasha says, I always have spiders behind the doors in my house. Great hyacinth, lovely. Very nice, very nice. We've had bee flies on our great hyacinths this week, so a oh, great one to look at. I love I love bee flies. I've not seen any yet this year personally, but they're great, aren't they? They're so good. Super cool. Amazing. So with that, I will hand over to Charlotte. And Charlotte's going to talk to us a bit about um ways that you can kind of look other ways that you can look for wildlife and some of the really cool things that we've found through city nature challenge in the past so i'll hand over to you now charlotte thank you very much uh, i'll just share my screen in a second can everyone see that wow so Um, sorry guys, I'm just having some trouble, um, in, there we go, the panel, right, so I'm just going to go through what we found during City Next Challenge last year, um, with some Lancashire specifics, and it's very nice to have quite a few people here from Lancashire tonight, because I am Team Lancashire, and last year, um, it was really nice to just get so many people taking part, especially because the pandemic had just started and we couldn't do the usual face-to-face -face kind of bio blitz style events that we would usually do for the City Nature Challenge. So we were so happy to get over 16,000 records in total. Um, 1,600 of those were of different species. Lancashire um, recorded the most species, which is very nice. And... Greater Manchester saw the most individual recorders taking part in the challenge and Liverpool City Region had the most observations. So each region took a different crown. Um, in Lancashire specifically, um, like I say, we recorded over a thousand different species, which was the most of the three regions. And the exciting thing about this was 253 of those were of 90 different species listed as Lancashire key species. And I'll just explain a bit about what they are because they're quite important. Um, Lancashire key spe species are any species with a recognised status, either um, nationally, um, locally within Lancashire or even internationally. And by a recognised status, I mean um, something that is protected under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. Um, it could be a species listed on a schedule, so a schedule one bird, which would be something like a kingfisher. Um, or even a red list bird like the curlew. And um, these also include species on the Lancashire Biodiversity Action Plan, which are particular focuses um, for us in this region. 
So these are just some of the Lancashire key species that were recorded last year. Um, got yellowhammer, brown hair, lapwing, water voles, which is really exciting because they're still recovering. Um, common frogs, which are actually quite threatened at the moment. Um, so it's nice to get a lot of records of them. And a lovely peatland plant called bog bean. And as well as those, we had loads of others like woodcock, um, royal fern, things like that. I'll just go back and I'll mention a bit about the importance of recording wildlife because we're asked this quite a lot. Sitting Nature Challenge is quite a big focus for us because without wildlife records we just wouldn't know what was out there essentially. Um, so once we have these records they're sent to the local record centre in Lancashire's case that is LEARN, Lancashire Environmental Record Network, um, and they can then <clears throat> use those wildlife records to monitor the populations of different species so we can see whether the population is going up, whether it's going down, and um, what might be causing that. Um, so it's a good indicator of issues in the wider um, landscape as well. Um, and then once those records are submitted, they can be using things like local planning applications. Um, so there are loads of ways you can go out to recall wildlife. Um, the good thing about Titch Nature Challenge is that absolutely anyone can take part in any way you could think of. Like we say, it could just be in your home if that's um, what's best for you. So you could go for a walk. Um, obviously, this is pretty much the easiest way to see and hear um, a variety of wildlife. Audio recordings count um, in the Sitting Nature Challenge. So you could record a blue tit you heard or a blackbird or something like that and um, submit the audio recording as your record. So you could go um, just down the street to your local park. Um, if you've got a lovely woodland nearby, absolutely anywhere. Of course, you could also go to one of our nature reserves. Um, we have loads, I think about 50 sites across Lancashire, Greater Manchester and North Merseyside. And we have a reserve finder on our webpage where you can just input your postcode and find the closest one to you. Um, you could go outside and look at your walls. This is a really beautiful nursery web spider that my boyfriend found in his grandma's house last week. So you never know what's lurking on there. And like Hilary said earlier, you can pick up your plant pots. And um, there's usually plenty of spiders, wood lice, beetles hiding underneath. And if you like, you can bring the wildlife to you. So um, there are loads of ways you can do this. You can do some of them are garden specific, some of them you could do if you have a just a balcony um, or a little yard, you could make your own bird feeder. Um, as well as pictures of wildlife, signs of wildlife count in the City Nature Challenge. So this could be scat um, or footprints like you can see here. You can make a footprint trap and see what might be hanging around your garden while you're not there to, to see it. Or my personal favourite, you could create a moth trap. Um, Moth trapping is a really amazing way to see what might be flying around your garden while you're asleep. Um, the moths, you could use um, a normal commercial moth trap, but you could make your own, or you could just use a sheet and a torch, um, which is really, really easy. And it's a really lovely family activity as well. Um, the moths just come to the light and um, come and land on the sheet. Um, and that's all from me. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the Q&A um, and we will answer them at the end. I'll just stop sharing my screen. There we go. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. So hopefully that's given you some inspiration of things that you can do to encourage more wildlife to you. Um, I don't know if at this point it's just worth quickly mentioning that, um, as Charlotte says, those wildlife records are hugely important to us and are, are really useful for various bits of research and um, some record centres can use them. So that is the case for LEARN and that is the case um, for Mersey Biobank. I believe that's right, isn't it, Caroline? I don't know if you would know. Um, as far as I'm aware, Merseyside Biobank can use some of them, but it's a bit... Yeah. Yeah, so iNaturalist, I don't know, actually know how long iNaturalist has been around for, but a, a few record centres are still kind of taking a look at whether they can use those, those records themselves. And we, I know that from 
Greater Manchester Local Record Centre's point of view, they're still kind of looking into that and kind of figuring out some of the things with that. But don't let that put you off. If you live in Greater Manchester, do not let that put you off from taking part in City Nature Challenge or from using iNaturalist, because iNaturalist is a really great way for you to learn um, about nature around you and for you to kind of keep a, keep a record of that. Um, and again, it's really useful for various bits of research. So people who are doing um, various bits of kind of studies can pull that, pull that data off and it is kind of public data. So definitely don't let that discourage you. But um, if you are hoping to kind of collect records that can be used by the Greater Manchester Record Centre, um, then I would suggest going to their website um, and actually that's probably the case for any kind of records after City Nature Challenge. It's probably the best thing to, to do if you're really interested in um, kind of the wider world of wildlife recording. The, probably the best thing to do is to go to those your local record centre and to figure out what the, what the easiest way for them is to get the data that they, they need. I don't know if Hilary, you've got anything to add to that. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think... Well, What's great about City Nature Challenge, like you say, is everyone can do it. And the more people that join in and the more species that are recorded uh, and, the, and the better time that everybody has while they're doing it, the, the better. Uh, and then if it encourages uh, some of those people to get more into recording and to want to know the ins and outs of how species records are recorded, kept and used, then it is a case of, of going to your local record centre. And I know certainly the Greater Manchester Local Record Centre regular um, recorders uh, sign in and, and have their own um, way of submitting records, but they also have something that they call a simple form. And you know, it is simple. So um, yeah, but, but start off with iNaturalist during City Nature Challenge, you know, it's just, it's just a really good, fun way to start with any sort of recording. Yeah, it is. It really is. So I've spotted one question in the chat so far. Um, Loretta uh, has a question about, um, I guess, that kind of cultivated wild. Um, it, are there any limitations on capturing images from various flora, fauna or wildlife in sanctuaries, parks and zoos? So I don't know if either of our panellists want to take that one. I can take that one if you'd like. Um, the stance of City Nature Challenge is that it's better if it's something wild. Um, and there's lots in your garden that you can definitely still record um, that hasn't been planted. So that example that I think maybe Hillary gave about um, looking for beetles and bugs in your garden is a really good example. Um, however, you can capture images of planted, captivated species, but the fewer the better, I think, with regard to that. And as long as you're ticking that they're captive or cultivated in the iNaturalist app, that shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, I definitely recommend um, just going for a walk. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate, like going to a, a zoo or looking for, a, I don't know why this example, but a rabbit in a park or like a little mini zoo that they have in parks sometimes. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Wild is better, but occasionally. Um, captive is fine sometimes yeah. it's hard to know isn't it yeah it is it is and in your garden you can have uh things you've planted and then weeds that you don't recognize or plants that other people have planted before you so yeah i think it's uh it's worth making the records um and i suppose the other thing to say is like you say people get a bit fixated on on larger mammals don't they that people tend to think of wildlife as rabbits or you know uh, birds that you can see but there are so much small wildlife out there just just waiting to be to be noticed and and this is a great thing because you know if you can get a photo of them uh you'll see detail in the photo that you haven't noticed in real life and somebody will somebody from the iNaturalist community will be able to identify them and it doesn't have to be anything wildly unseen before, like a dandelion is fine, yeah. a gull is fine, a pigeon yeah. is welcome, things like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. last year I actually, um, I decided I'd try and make my um, my bathroom, Charlotte, into a into a moth trap. So overnight, I, that. I, love yeah, that I left idea. the windows open and the lights on and the door shut. So I could, I, 
convinced myself that in the morning I'd come into all these different sorts of insects that I'd be able to clamber around and take photos of. And there was just nothing, nothing, nothing. Apart I've from done a really it accidentally. Chilly, chilly bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> when I've done it accidentally, we've had loads in hours. But when I do it on purpose, it's like they know, they never come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was it. But um, but yes, I think I think I might try it again. It all depends on the weather for that sort of thing. But um, yeah. I might try it again. Oh, well, Loretta from India, she gets all sorts of Very amazing jealous. parrots. Brilliant. <laughs> Very jealous. Mongoose. Yes, we've, we've got our parakeets, of course. We do have parakeets. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Here in Manchester, yeah, we do have our ring necked parakeets, which I'm sure, um, I'm sure that I might be taking some photos of them because they're often on my bird feeder, so they'll get That's recorded. Fantastic. Yeah. We've had them in Barra Ford recently, but I've not seen them for a while now. That can be your challenge, can't it? Get, get them on iNaturalist, get them on Definitely. iNaturalist. Speaking of challenges, um, it would be good if everyone could follow our social media pages in the Rome to City Next Challenge, because each day we'll be posting a little mini challenge for you to do um, that will help you find some wildlife to record. So if you're not sure, where to go or what to look for then you can have a go at one of our mini challenges yeah that's yeah that's a really good point so that can give you a bit more inspiration for things to do as as well in the absence of us being able to run recording events with you guys which is the ultimate the ultimate dream <laughs> the ultimate dream um something that that um i wanted to mention and now it's completely gone hang on, it will come to me, is um, so the 30th to the 3rd is when people can record wildlife. And then there's a, a little period of time afterwards. Is it, a, is it about a week where um, people are going through and they're kind of verifying data records and they're kind of making them as usable um, for researchers um, as possible? And so I don't know, Caroline, if you're able to kind of talk about that a little bit more, um, because if anyone is kind of, if you are really keen on wildlife, which I, I probably bet you are, because you're at this event, then you might be able to help someone else identify one of their records. And that just improves the data bank. Um, so yeah, I'll hand over to Caroline, sorry. <laughs> Yes, so the City Nature Challenge takes part in two different phases, as it were, and the first one is collecting uh, wildlife recordings, which, like we said, runs from April the 30th to May the 3rd, and then the second phase runs from May the 4th to May the 9th, and that's um, identifying what's been found. So when I was speaking about how you can use iNaturalist to identify the species that you found, whatever it might be, um, that's actually a something that experts and other iNaturalist users will be involved with from May the 4th to May the 9th, because it's not just having the record, of course, it's knowing what the record is about. That's so valuable um, in terms of our use of it. Um, and also, like Ellie said, is a really just nice part to be involved in anyway. So if it was the case that you just wanted to take your records in that first four days and then spend the next four days identifying what it was, then you would be the City Nature Challenge champion because that's two phases and a tick for both of them. Um, and then on May the 10th, um, I believe that all of the information worldwide is collated and we get totals for how the Northwest has done and the three regions and how Liverpool has won all three categories for most observations, most species, most participants. Um, so yes, so May the 10th is also a date to look out for. So we've got that kind of final moment summing up what's happened this year in City Next Challenge. Brilliant. Yeah, I think that'd be really great because ultimately we don't just want lots of records, we want lots of good quality records um, that can be useful. And actually kind of touching on that, because um, I know kind of having spoken to a few people who want to get involved in City Nature Challenge this year, I know that in the run up to City Nature Challenge, it can be quite tempting to kind of take photos of, of wildlife now and bank them up <laughs> until the 30th to do a mass upload um, and 
as fun as that sounds, I would I would kind of advise kind of I would discourage that because that is again that's kind of bad wildlife record recording, isn't it? Um, yeah. Because yeah, the thing the thing that makes wildlife records useful is knowing what what you've seen, but also knowing when you've seen it. Um, and so, kind of obscuring the changing the dates a bit to fit in the city nature challenge mm. will just kind of make that record not as accurate as it can be. So as, as tempting as that is, I would suggest that you definitely go out, get recording, get used to iNaturalist, become a whiz at it so that you can just ping through <laughs> as many as possible. Um, yeah. But all of that recording does need to happen in those four days. Mm. And that's the collaborative effort as well, isn't it? Because it gives a false snapshot of actually what's happening in our green mm -hmm. spaces, especially in um, kind of urban spaces where it can change so rapidly. So yeah, although it's a competition, it's also a collaborative effort. So yeah, absolutely wouldn't recommend just info dumping information in there because it'll just look like we have no nature except for these four days a year where suddenly we've got so much nature that you've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, if you've got any more questions in the next few minutes, just do let us know and we'll try to answer them for you now. Um, otherwise you can drop us an email. But what I was gonna ask everyone is, um, what is the best thing? Because I think we've all used our naturalist ourselves, haven't we? Let's all nod along, hosts and panelists, great. What's the, be what's the best thing that you've recorded on iNaturalist? Sorry, this is a just like, you just don't remember. For me, um, it was a speckled wood chrysalis that I found in my garden. Um, and the only reason I found it is because uh, the, the butterfly had laid it on this red brick wall and a speckled wood chrysalis is bright green. But it's tiny so I would I would not have seen it at all and of course I saw it and I was like what is that I've never seen that before um put it on iNaturalist and I think within a few hours I got an ID on it and now since then looking now I've had six other people say yes it is a speckled wood chrysalis so that is just super exciting oh, very good very good um I think uh last year I tried to record bird song i made some recordings um and really enjoyed doing that so i got some i got black cap and white throats and grasshopper warbler but it's really hard when you're making sound recordings because of course birds don't wait for all the other birds to stop singing do they and then just do their bit and our ears always tune in to what we're listening to whereas when you play it back it was just a mass of bird song. So, so it was finding, it was finding the sedge warbler that was actually on its own singing that I was very pleased with. Very, very nice. Charlotte, I don't know if you can remember what your best one is. Um, not City Nature Challenge specific, but I love recording fungi with our naturalist because it's some I love them, but I'm not amazing at identifying them and by using our naturalist to identify them as well as log my records has really helped me um broaden my knowledge about fungi um which is one of like you say the best things about sustainable challenge is learning as you're going along and um connecting with even more nature than you might have normally yeah completely completely it is really great to kind of just start opening your kind of wildlife ID skills up to just like completely new you, know, you can go from knowing absolutely nothing about a certain group like fungi or like trees to you know after a couple of pictures you've at least got a few that you kind of know and you can look back mm. and be like oh yes I, I've seen this in person and it did look like this so yeah it's, it is super lovely for that. Caroline don't know if you've got a favourite um, I do, but I don't. So one of the things I really like about a naturalist, other than being able to identify different species is, I really like that it's almost like Instagram for nature pictures, <laughs> you know, so you can like, someone can appreciate that you've taken a really good picture of a seagull. So um, yeah, I took a really nice picture of a seagull the other day and he looked really, he had a proper attitude on him and he stood on one leg like, 
So I know that's not very nature specific, but I really enjoyed putting it on a naturalist and people also being like, this is a fun photo. So I suppose that's a nice community element as well. <laughs> Yeah, it does definitely have that kind of nice kind of social media element to it as well, which is just just super nice, because if you are a nature nerd like we all are, <laughs> it's nice to kind of get excited about things that you've found and get excited with, with other people as well. Um, great. So I think with that, we might wrap it up there. Um, as I said, if you if you do have any more questions do feel free um, to email us I'll put our email in the chat now and we'll do our best to answer it or to pass you on to someone who can help um, so yeah if you do have any questions then um, let us know as Charlotte said before please do keep an eye on our social media because we'll be posting lots of little mini challenges and things to just kind of keep you excited about City Nature Challenge um, and keep you going with it and getting out and recording and yeah those dates are the 30th of April to the 3rd of May so it's bank holiday weekend so plenty of time a nice activity to do um, and just yeah really get out and enjoy it so yeah I think with that I'll just say thank you to both our speakers and thanks to Hilary as well Thanks everyone. Have a great City Nature Challenge weekend. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.